I'm Sydney and I am currently living in New York City, um, but I am originally from San Antonio, Texas and I did my undergrad at the Ver University of North Texas where I joined the Baroque Orchestra, Baroque Orchestra and that's where I met Paul. So I started actually playing piano when I was four um, and I played for about eight years, um, and, but it wasn't, it clearly I don't think was my instrument. No offense to pianists. Um, and then I just kind of accidentally picked the cello to start playing. I liked it because it was a large instrument and I wanted to play a large instrument, but I had no, no idea what it was. So everything I feel like musically just kind of happened accidentally because um, I'm the only musician in my family as well. So yeah, and then I ended up really liking it. I started even going on tours like in high school to like China and England and stuff and then um, I eventually moved to Denton, studied at University of North Texas um, and then after I graduated, I mean I guess while I was there I realized how much I loved early music and playing Baroque cello and so Paul helped me like figure out kind of what I wanted to do after that and I ended up studying at the Royal Conservatory of the Hague in Holland. Um, started a master's there, uh, didn't finish, ended up dropping out, and then Phoebe Karai, the Baroque cello professor at Juilliard, reached out to me and was like, hey, you want to audition? We have a spot open. And I was like, okay, sure. So she set up a special audition for me in Germany and then I got in. So then I moved to New York City and actually finished my master's <laughs> there. I just want to point out to people watching this seven string gamba. Yes. Gambas normally, all vials have six strings like guitars. They're, they're tuned like guitars. They're kind of like boat guitars in a, in a way. And the French got the idea that if you had a low A string, which takes it all the way down here, you practically have the entire range of music because you can go very, very high up on the high strings and high positions. So you can accompany yourself, you can play all manner of uh, music, and uh, it was a really excellent improvement that came out. Was, was it Marais that, that did that? Or? I believe so. Yeah. In any event, uh, the gamba yeah. turned into this incredible solo vehicle, which yeah. it really had never been. It was just another member of the Vile family, and there were some pieces. And then when this seventh string got on and people started realizing that they could do everything, on this instrument, it became the instrument of kings in a funny way. I mean, not to usurp the organ <laughs> title, but the uh, uh, the viol was considered something higher than the cello, for instance, uh, and uh, especially in France. But since everybody was then imitating France, all these little German princes all wanted to have a Versailles of their own, and so this became. I mean, this is pretty French for a German composer. And of course, the instrument fits fabulously in that regard. Paul played a house concert for us a few years back. That was a big success. And uh, Arash Nuri played the uh, lute and theorbo and all the rest of that to accompany that concert. So I put in a line and Paul said, well, how about this time we do gamba, cello. I know somebody that I really like to have down here. So. I said, okay. And uh, like I said, he's almost been more the curator of this concert than uh, just the soloist. He, he conceived it and uh, put up together a lot of very interesting and not very well-known music. I mean, it's gonna be a real treat because you just don't hear all this stuff and it's fabulous and he's terrific. And uh, I like to think we're terrific, so it should be a, uh, it should be a good show and uh, the, uh, the point, I don't know, people always say, well, you know, why, why do you do all this obscure music sometimes? Everybody wants to hear the Four Seasons and the Messiah and all the rest of things. So we do those things, but then we try to fill up the season with interesting, wonderful stuff. And 
you know, a lot of times, like we've done Monteverdi concerts, and people just go absolutely bonkers because they didn't believe there's music that's that beautiful. And as you can see here, you may never have heard of Kuhnel, but the music is glorious and uh, very intimate and perfect for this house concert setting for both Aldrich House and our new venue up in the colony. So uh, it, it's something that music lovers could definitely spend an evening with and feel very uh, fulfilled. I'm also told the catering at the colony is going to be fabulous. So <laughs> that's another reason always to uh, take part in these, in these events. Do you know the direct translation of the title of the program? No, because okay. my Dutch is a little less than... Austin Finstock, Spring. Hold on, let me. No, can I Google Translate that? I was really going to say it's actually German, isn't it? But, right. Yeah. But it's. I mean, German and Dutch is pretty close. Yeah. But I'm not going to tell just everyone that. <laughs> I have this thing downloaded here, but. Austin oh, Finstock. We need German. Uh, Okay, so it directly translates to jumped out of the window, uh -huh. which does right. have something to do with me. Did you jump out of a window? I so? did jump out of a window. We were, <laughs> <laughs> we were on tour in Germany and Austria. Uh -huh. And my last day there, you know, I had to like leave the house that I was staying in, which were some of Paul's friends like a family and you know in Europe doors and locks are a little different you have to like even if you're on the inside you can't just like turn you know the lock and lock it you have to have a key to lock it which means to like get out you also have to have a key to get out and I don't know if I was just um not doing it right or what, but none of the keys there, I couldn't get out of the house. I just couldn't. And so I had like, I, I even, I had a flight case even, not like, you know, a normal case. So I had a flight case and a giant suitcase and all my stuff. And I was like, I have to get to the airport. I'm gonna miss my flight. So I found a window and I, it was, you know, and it's, it was actually a pretty high window but it's okay. And so I dropped all my stuff out the window and ended up having to jump out the window so I could get out of this house because I was just locked in. <laughs> so there's a picture somewhere, but <laughs> I'd have to find it. So, so that's why we have this title. <laughs> 